Joining us right now is Hugh Murphy from Credo Consulting. Hugh, here. Thanks so much for joining us. My pleasure. Uh, absolutely. Where would you like to begin? Well, a little, little bit about what uh, what we're doing and uh, what uh, what our perce- perceptions are. Is that what uh, the objective is? I think that's a great place to start. Okay, so Credo is a bit of a different kettle of fish uh, with respect to a lot of the kinds of organizations that would present at this conference. Typically, you're going to find uh, uh, companies that uh, that manufacture uh, I- instruments. Um, we don't spend our time manufacturing uh, financial instruments, in particular in this particular case uh, with ETH- ETFs. Uh, we spend our time studying um, the positions of investors with, right. with respect to ETFs. Uh, ETFs are a relatively new um, financial interest, uh, instrument in, in the marketplace, and the the uh, the people that are adopting ETFs right now, they're not your typical investors. Right. Uh, they differ. So we have, over the last five years, collected a tremendous amount of d- uh, data that enables us to create what we call psychosocial profiles. Uh, at the end of the day, if you're a financial advisor and you're trying to connect with, um, with your client, um, you're not going to do it by bringing bandy out, bandying out product and explaining this product or that right, product and why, it, why it fits into your portfolio. You may, but really, you'll disengage. Uh, uh, you'll, you'll, you'll find a lot, a lot of disengagement. Yeah. So what we do is we do research to help advisors understand what's going on in the minds of their their, their clients. Um, psych- psychosocial profiling of, in this, in this period, what I'm about to present has to do with um, uh, 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 individuals who are uh, ETF users. But we could we we could just as easily look at people that are are RSP users or uh, TFSA users, or principal protected note users. We could look at I- individuals that use BlackRock product. We, we could le- look at individual, individuals that use AGF product and show that there are- get really specific. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Tremendous differences. Uh, and, and those differences are really what help you understand what's going on behind the hinds of the eyes of your customers. Um, Something that we've watched, I, I think, over time are, I mean, tectonic shifts in the way that the financial industry has been moving. Um, and in particular, the financial advice space. Um, it is extremely difficult to compete um, as a money manager, manager at this stage. If, you, uh, if you're out there as a, thinking you're a financial advisor and thinking you're a money manager, yeah. well then, good luck. Good luck beating the boys at Fidelity. Good luck beating the guys at RBC. Yeah. They have literally global massive teams. Um, instead, your job as an advisor has to be to connect not where uh, artificial intelligence is saying that uh, factor-based investing is de- delivering new levels of value uh, or um, predictive modeling right. is showing that this is going to be the next phase of investing. If you're, trying to play, if you're playing that game, you're, you're behind the eight ball. What you have to do as an advisor in this day and age is understand the person who's sitting across the table from you. Look into the whites of their eyes understand what their goals are right and and in so doing recognize that an appropriate portfolio can be put together with all of that stuff that all of these different companies you put together there's there's a plethora, plethora of it out there i mean at the end of the day yeah i think that's part of the problem isn't that is that there's there's a gigantic number of pro- products available well, really is there really options there's there there is cash yeah. there is equity and there is debt. The way that the, the asset managers mix it up, push it out, pull it in, push but in, it in. But in the equity and debt space. It's that, that, that's all, that's all there is. Yeah. So the, the rest of it is a marketing game. Yeah. The, re, the rest of it is a marketing game. It, so as an advisor, you, ha, you have to focus on what, what you really can control, and that is the key Personal personal relationship with you uh, the, with uh, with which you have with your, uh, with your clients, and that's what we help um, uh, 
our clients do. And our clients, I mean, our clients are the big manufacturers. They're, 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 they're the big dealerships. They're the, in this particular case, uh, the Canadian ETF Association came to us and said, listen, let's do some research. Let's really understand the market penetration yeah. so of you know, ETFs. So, Hugh, you're helping, you're helping uh, your clients, yeah. the issuers, uh, the association, yep. in this case, to distill the message to the advisors... Uh, to the advisors, to their, ultimately, and to their public, to, really, to, 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 to everyone clients, that needs yeah. to hear the message, and that that, that message is um, that that there is a long, long landing strip for ETFs in the marketplace because technology, honestly, does it better than people does. It does it better than people do. So, what's your insight? Who who are the users? Who are the adopters of ETFs today? Who are the people who are who are opting on their own, of their own volition. Uh, that's, a, that's a wonderful question. To buy ETFs. People that are taking time to develop their own high, higher levels of financial literacy, who are actually taking time to invest. Uh, if, there's three things people need. They need an interest in their own investing for themselves. Right. They need knowledge themselves. And they need time. If you don't have time to do it yourself, you, you hire an advisor. If you don't have interest, you hire an advisor because an advisor, and I, I should say that nobody should have more interest in your money than you should. No one should. You, you right. should if, if that's the case, you got a problem. Same as with your health. You, same, as, yeah. same as with your health, indeed. So, so time, money, uh, and, and interest are, the, are, are those things. And you, you, people have to invest in those things. The people that are, are, are into ETFs right now, uh, it's a uh, it's a new kettle of fish. They are relatively um, oh, they're early adopters. Really, they're smart. They're yeah. extremely well educated. They have money. Um, advisors recognize, and there's, we've been watching the squeeze. Uh, the, the monetary and fee squeeze that's been going on in this business for, for years now. Um, yeah, it's this race to zero. It, it's, yeah. it's, a ra it's, it's a ridiculous race to, to zero. And, and honestly, one of the things that frustrates me to no end about this industry is, is this race to zero and the, the, the idea that this is about, about, about fees. It's not. This is about getting, getting people over the finish line. It's, it's, a get, it's about getting people to understand the importance of their money, to engage in their money, to develop the levels of light, financial literacy that are critical yeah, and yet to, to, to setting them up for, for life. And yet all the focus is on, has been, seems to have been on cost, oh. yeah, as opposed well, to, because, because you don't have to think about how the market's doing. Thing. That's an industry thing. Yeah. The, 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 the focus is on, on, on cost. It's easy to focus on cost because people will look at cost. But really, pay, pay your financial advisor the 25 basis points more if he's prepared to understand what your real goals are. Yeah. I mean, every individual has, has goals in life. The, the advisor that brings value to the table susses those out. And, and coaches you, and over time makes sure you're heading towards those. Right, keeps you on track. Product aside, it doesn't matter. It just, I mean, there's, there's tons of product out there to, to, to do that with. Where the real value comes in for, for advisors and where advisors need to recognize the, the, the change is, they can't beat artificial intelligence. They can't, it, it is, is the, if there is more predictive modeling capacity out there. I mean, go to Google. Hop on Google. Last time you went right. on, on Google, uh, you, you typed a few things in, and the last six ads, ads that came up, they came up because you went there. Yeah. You, know, you went somewhere, and, and they know exactly what you're interested in. Yeah, you, they you follow know. you around. Exactly. They follow you around. What inspired those early adopters? I mean, they're intelligent. They have money. They want to invest. What inspired them? Why ETFs? That's that, that's was actually it, was really... it, were they inspired by the low cost? Um, no. I well, no, actually, it's part of it. That that is that is a part of it. Okay, I mean, it's definitely. But it's a not part the of primary 
Is it the primary focus? It is. It is a primary focus at okay. this point. I mean, as if in the presentation I'm about to make, you know, we're going to find that that uh, the, the cost of these instruments is. Uh, I mean, we, we already know it's considerably be considerably lower than paying uh, a buck and a half for uh, for something you can pay uh, uh, sixty cents for. Yeah. So be reasonable. As, as soon as you develop the financial literacy yourself. As soon as you assume responsibility for your own money, um, th then then you well, start it, making it, reasonable it's, choices. It's hard to counter the Spiva argument, the S and P argument, Absolutely. right? It's Absolutely. very hard to counter that. I mean, what do you mean hard to counter? Which thirty percent? No that. But in any given no. year, in any given year, you're always left with the quandary: which thirty percent of the market is going to beat the market? Which thirty percent of money managers is going to beat? The index. Don't worry about you. You don't right, worry but, about that. But see, buying. But that's the argument that passive Absolutely. makes is that stop worrying about that and just own it. Um, yeah, and and right. it, you know what? There's more important things than life. And, and yeah. a, a bunch of uh, advisors in, in in this session have already come out, and people have already come out and said it. There are more. There are a heck of a lot more important things in life. Life. The worrying about the, the ten beeps you're gonna lose here, or the, or the ten you're gonna gain there. I mean, if you if you're really worried about that, then you're in a different situation. Yeah. But literally, uh, I I I have to be. I know that the brain surgeon that I, sp I spent uh, six hours with l last week, he doesn't give a damn about uh, t uh, t ten basis points in his portfolio. That, no. that, that's not his area. What he has to do is focus on what he's really good at, right. what, what makes him uh, whole as, a, as an individual. People have to understand what their goals need to be. And people that, that hire a good financial advisor do that. And those, those, those good financial advisors, they make their money. They, they, they earn their money. Yeah, absolutely. The ones that are able to unlock... Their clients' wishes and find out well, find out all of that important really find out all the about. high price. So that's back to the question. About. So so they were inspired. They were inspired by okay. I don't want to overpay for yeah. owning the market. Yeah. Secondly, then then what? Yeah, don't, you, you, you don't want to get rocked for yeah. sure. You're, you're Why not, should I pay for something I'm not getting? Well, you shouldn't pay anything for oh, anything exactly. for something. You're <laughs> you know, listen. I am not arguing that financial advisors don't earn their keep. I am not, I am abs, in fact, one of my greatest concerns right now is that we don't have bright young minds getting into this industry. If you look at the, the disparity between, um, the, 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 there's a gender disparity that exists in the advice industry. Right now, in the IROC realm, or realm you're dealing with about 17% of IROC advisors being women. Right. If you, you incorporate the MFDA realm, it gets up to about the the, the twenty three, twenty four percent. But really, there's no women in this business. We and, yeah. and, and and women that bring the sensibility. There needs to be. There needs to be a lot of change going on in this business. Um, and between you and me, our regulators are not driving it forward the way it needs to be driven forward. There's there's a lot. There's there's too much politicking. Um, but between them, there's there's focus on stuff that just doesn't matter. I mean, do you think the financial crisis really left, the one, left the a lot of folks the uninspired? The last, one? the last one. Okay. Did the last one leave a lot of younger people, like people that would have been new entrants to the business, and women uninspired? So that so that there wasn't this motivation. I think left everyone. I mean, I don't think people are motivated. I don't think people are motivated. I don't think I don't think women and, and, and young university graduates are motivated by diversity or, or by by youth to be in, to, to get into a business because they're youthful or because no there's they fit, they fit a diversity profile. But obviously, no. there's a lack of diversity for a reason. There there is there is there's a lack of understanding there's a lack of understanding of the lifestyle that comes with the, the financial advice realm. Um, there are different choices. People make different choices. If you look at business schools, they're currently fifty fifty populated, roughly, but between men and women, um, and yet coming out of it, uh, the, the percentage of people that are getting into being a, a financial advisor is a cutthroat business. It's a tough business. It is a tough, 
cutthroat business. And I, you, you need positive mentors at the end, uh, at, the, at the higher ends of, of it to cultivate young people's interest in it and have them recognize that as much as it may feel cutthroat, there's, there's, there's truly something going on at the end of the day that's valuable, valuable for these people. I mean, financial advisors serve a cr critical role in this, especially as the population pyramid moves to where it's moving. I mean, we, 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 have, we have too few advisors getting into the business. We have people arriving in an age where they don't know how to deal with their money effectively uh, when it's so inc incredibly important. Uh, this, we are in a crisis situation in this industry. There's, there's no question in my mind. And it's not being managed well. Uh -huh. Well, it's, not, it's being managed well beautifully for some, but not for those that necessarily need it right. to be managed well for them. So, again, let me, let me, let me go back to... Sorry, I went off on all sorts of tangents. It's, it's great. I, 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 the, there's a lot of food for thought. Mm, yeah. <laughs> a lot of food for yeah. thought. But what I, back to... Uh, I think we, we, we determined that, that the uh, folks who, who are the early adopters of ETFs, cost was a factor. What's the second factor? What's the, what's the, what do you think is the most important factor that led them to, to adopt these, these no, tools? These knowledge. Tools. Knowledge. Absolutely. Because the tools Awareness. themselves. Uh, um, understanding. I mean, the tools bring to the table what you need to manage your money. Honestly, God, I, I laugh as I look at uh, um, uh, clients that come to me. I mean, they're not my clients, but they're people that I work with. And they say, yeah, I've got a financial advisor, and he manages my portfolio with uh, 14 different mutual funds. And I think 14 different mutual funds? For the love of God, uh, every single one of those mutual funds, it, it should be, uh, so it should bring the level, an appropriate level of diver diversification, because that's what a mutual fund is for. So what on earth are they doing? They're trading, they trading mutual funds like stocks. They are. It's 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 an abomination. The uh, and and um, advisors really need to give their heads a shake. And, and 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 do what's right for the end investor. In, but but that, I mean, you know, what I, you know what I realize right now? What's that? I realize that that I'm not the one who's asking you the tough questions. You're the one who's asking the tough questions. Like well, you're, you're, I mean, the rhetorical questions because they're hard to answer for a lot of people. They're not that ter terribly hard to answer. Here's here here's an idea. How about fiduciary duty? Really, for for our for our regulators yeah. to say that. We do not really need a fiduciary duty in Canada. If you put your name on a business card and say, you're going to be, I'm going to be a financial advisor, you should be saying, I'm looking after you first. And actually, one of the things that Credo does yeah. is we, we ask literally tens of thousands of Canadians on an annual basis to comment on their financial advisor and say, is my is my advisor putting me ahead, or are they putting them ahead? And what's the what's the, uh, the range? Depends yeah. what what uh, dealership you're dealing with, and if if you're interested in seeing, it's it's all out there and, and available to see which different dealerships, fee, uh, uh, which different dealerships clients feel as though they're betting, being dealt with effectively. We we measure this for you, you you pick a shop a TD a Ray James a, a, an Ed Jones a, 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 an IG we produce the statistics that show you just how in, the investors feel that they're getting that they are or are not getting value from their clients and their propensity to disengage from those advisors and to move on to someone else. So Hugh, what? Based on what you just said, yeah. what, what are the areas that need the most improvement? I mean, just in general, across the board, what's the, weak, what's the weakest Bar point? Bar none. Financial literacy. 
we need to do a better job of integrating into people's into people's lexicon an understanding of the most fundamental uh, fundamental uh, things about investing the fact that i mean for the love of god would somebody buy someone a copy of the the, the wealthy barber and hang hand it out again honestly <laughs> honestly yeah i mean they go go back to basics learn that you need to save more money than you're spending um Learn that if you're saving, you're actually an investor because you're putting your money somewhere. Yeah. You, 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 people need to understand these things. You know, uh, we, do, we do complex research, and it's, it's fun and interesting, but at the end of the day, we need to address financial literacy, get people engaged in their money, make sure that they have time for it, make sure that they understand it, um, and and uh, make sure that they're engaged in it. Um, and we need to somehow um, uh, repopulate. We need to repopulate and reestablish the integrity of, uh, of being a financial advisor. There should be pride in being a financial advisor. Um, and now I think everybody in the, the, the room behind me is probably proud of being a financial advisor. Maybe for some of them it's because they've got a, a book of uh, 110 million bucks right. and, they're, they're, they, and, and they, they drive the, uh, the Porsche. And they, maybe some of them that's, that's the problem. But really, there is, there is real witting pride. There needs to be real witting pride in understanding that you're helping someone develop the responsibility to be uh, to, to achieve their goals in life it's 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 just so that so so those are the those are uh, one and close second mm. one is financial literacy and second of all is 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 just in general uh, pride of being a uh, pride in being a financial yeah. advisor how would uh, is, is is that really how the do way you define that and like how do you how do you get, get to determination I mean, are you implying that there isn't? That's a lack of pride. You know what? I haven't. I actually haven't measured. I, I, I'm a measurement yeah. guy. I spend all of my time uh, measuring things, and I haven't really. So what, what's the? So what is the clue that? What is? The, what is the clue to you that implies that that there the could be that more? There aren't any, uh, the, the fact that there isn't um, a lineup of people behind us saying. I really want. So, to does that right. does that have anything? I mean, did the last did the financial upheaval of the last yeah. decade sort of oh, yeah. act as a block oh, on that disillusion? My mind, uh, anecdotally, in mind, no mind, no, no. So that's no, that's no, where no, that's what needs to be restored in order to the integrity of the system right. itself, and then the integrity of the, the, the its system itself um, it always appears under suspicion. I mean, you don't need too many Bernie Madoffs uh, to, uh, to, to, to scare people off right. in the system. You don't. Hugh, thank you very much for uh, this very enlightening discussion. That's a good perspective. It's, yeah. it's, it's probably a different perspective from uh, uh, some that you've heard for uh, the rest of the day, but uh, uh, it's fine for what it's worth. But you're reflecting some of the, uh, I mean, the findings of your research. Oh, no question. Yeah. Thank you very much. My pleasure, Pierre.